Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you. A few more people than uh, this morning, so I will be a little bit shy to speak with so many uh, nice people from Alberta. My name is André Trati. I am from Quebec, so this is why the accent is, uh, is French a little bit. I am on the beach side, so on the sunny side of uh, volleyball, beach volleyball. So um, before I start uh, my, uh, my presentation, I would like to, this will be on high performance uh, volleyball and, uh, and beach volleyball and refereeing and different stuff. So let me try to put you in the mood. This is a promotional video that uh, we made at the FIVB for the Olympics in Rio. So there's just some music, okay? So it's going to tell you a bit more what uh, the experience we live in Rio in uh, 2016.
Okay. Okay, so I thought, I just want to see if this thing works. Doesn't work. Okay. So I thought, you know, just after lunch, a nice little movie will quiet you down a little bit and put you in the uh, spirit of high performance. Um, I'm going to talk to you about high performance, but not only as a high, high international level, but, you know, high performance is always when you're doing a final in your region, when you're doing a provincial final, when you're doing a national final or total tough matches. It's always the same at the top level. It's always the same challenge we have, we face the anxiety, anxiety, and we're nervous. And when I'm saying we are nervous, I'm talking about the referees, I'm talking about the players, I'm talking about the coaches. And we feel it, we know that there is emotion, it's not the same thing. I always give the same example, like, you know, when we do U Sport or CCA matches in the season, then we get to the semi-final and the finals at the end of the year, it's not the same. The same team, same players, same referees, but the level is different because the, uh, the magnitude of the match is different. So I am going to talk to you about three aspects. Normally when I do presentation, I talk about rules, regulations, protocol, blah, blah, blah. This one, they asked me to talk about the, the insight, the experience of a high level referee which unfortunately will have to be me and I do not like to talk about me. So I try to, I will speak in general. Okay, so when I give example, okay, it's gonna be me because it's the one I live, but let's say that's in general, okay? I will cover three aspects of high performance. I am going to cover the aspect and uh, the experience of a referee on the FIVB World Tour. I am also have a different role, so I'm gonna speak about the different roles that I have on the, uh, in the world. So I am a member of the Referee Commission from uh, Volleyball Canada for uh, quite a few years because uh, I'm also a volleyball referee. I'm a national volleyball referee because, you know, in Canada, the beaches are closed for six months. So in the winter, I do volleyball and in the summer, I get some sunshine and uh, suntan. Uh, I don't know if you know, but in, in, we have an organization, it's called Norseca, which is like, you know, uh, uh, Mexico, Canada, USA and the Caribbean. So I am also a member of uh, that group. And I'm also a member of the FIV Rules of the Game and Referee Commission. So I am lucky in a sense that, you know, when I, I work with the people who create the rules. So when a new rule gets born, I, I listen to it and I understand the philosophy behind it. So this is what I was uh, when I come back to Canada and at the international scene. One of my role is not only to teach the rule because rules are important. That's OK. But at the top level, we need to understand the philosophy behind the rules. Okay, so, and you know, as much as we do, coaches, we have changed our sport, both volleyball and beach, a lot in the last few years. You know, rally scoring, uh, quick substitution, and two liberos, and so many different things that we're doing to improve the game. Because, you know, volleyball, we are a small sport considered to soccer, uh, uh, athleticism, uh, swimming, blah, 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 ice hockey here. So we have to compete with other sports. And to compete with sports, now there is two platforms, right? There is the TV and there is the internet. So we have to be to, comp uh, to compete with those sports. And in order to make our sports competitive, we need to make them uh, appealing to the media and also easy to understand and with action and emotion. And I think we bring a lot of emotion back to the sport now. You've seen the, you know, now we have um, in the different uh, video you saw, we have a uh, light, light show, music, you know, in beach, we've been famous with this for a long time and we're a show. So we need to attract more and more people. Okay. So I am also a volleyball referee, so I had a chance to, this is here in Calgary that I got my national level. For, so for me, in the high performance uh, world, this is where it all started. So when Volleyball Alberta called me, they said, Andre, we'd like to, to present a few things in Calgary. I was so happy and honored to be here. So uh, again, for me here, it's a special place. And uh, we also have what we call a high performance committee in, uh, in uh, Volleyball Canada. And I am working on this for volleyball in beach. 
I also like to take the opportunity to remind all of you that you know I have the chance to travel to uh, all over the world and to give courses to different uh, federation and uh, and uh, confederation. And I can tell you that our program in Canada to develop the referees are one of the best in the world. And one of the reasons why we are so good, it's because of you, coaches and teams. Because referees cannot uh, work hard and be performant at a high level if they don't have a good level of, uh, of competition back in their country. And it's also my job to remind you that I understand that sometimes we have some discussion in between players and coaches, uh, referees and coaches, which is normal. I'll discuss a little bit about that later. But uh, please remember that we have among one of the best referee development program in the world. So I think sometimes referees are doing a good job also. Okay. Beach volleyball in Canada, right? Uh, it started in the um, you know early 90s, mid 90s, right? And we had at that time a very strong national tour. We were having events all over Canada, from the east to the middle to the west, and uh, we had some very strong professional players. And then they started. Okay, so for them to continue at this high level. They, they said we need referees because there was some big fight among the players because at that time, and I was playing then, I know it's hard to believe, but yes, I was a player too. And, um, well, you know, we're fighting a lot about, well, this ball is in, no, it's out. Uh, did you touch it? No, I did not. So we had some fights. So we, we decided to have a, uh, a referees. Talking a little bit about history, I don't know if you know, but in 1996, John Child and Mark Heath from, uh, from Canada, they were bronze medalists at the first ever Olympic uh, present in beach volleyball. So players we had were very strong. So we decided to have some referees, but at that time we had nothing. Like we were so well prepared in volleyball, like with documents and rules, regulations, mentors and all those things. In beach we had nothing. So a group of volleyball referees decided to go to the beach and we start from scratch. probably from some coaches and from some of your players or both, more for referees. So when you make the transition from going to volleyball to the beach, it's it, like black and white. Either you like it or you, you hate it. And I have referees come to me and say, well, this is stupid. I will never do that. I hate sun. It's too hot. It's too cold. It's rainy. It's windy. All those things. So you like it or you don't. I am in the one of the ones who liked it. And of course, the weather conditions are so different. You know, when you go to a volleyball hall, you get to the gym, you know, the lines are there, the court is there, it will not move, uh, the net most likely, you know, you put it on, then it's finished. For us, we have to work the court all the times, every matches, uh, sometimes the net will change in between matches, so we have to adjust that. So, the workload is, is way much different. What we had to create then, um, since, you know, when we started, we had nothing. And we had this top level, so we've decided to create what we call the inverted pyramid. Because, you know, in volleyball, you have level one, level two, level three, all the way to national, international referees. So you have your big base, and then you go like this. What we did then, like in, in the early 90s, we've decided to send some a group of referees to the top level, so to an international referee course for them to get, you know, learn the rules, learn everything and then bring it back to their country and, you know, start working down and to create the normal pyramid. Probably this time I will not go over, over time. So, because, you know, I, sometimes I speak too much. I'll try to be quicker. So in... 96, um, well, first of all, they tried to contact a few referees in 95 to become, you know, to go to the top level. They contacted me in 95 and I said no, because I was playing, I was golfing. There's no way I'm going to play in the summer, uh, ref in the summer. And then they called me again in 96. Oh, come on, Andre, would you like to go to a course, blah, blah, blah. So I said, yes, whatever. We'll see what happens. And um, the first referee that we sent was in Rio, Mr. Friesen. Daryl Friesen, for the one who don't know him, he was the best 
beach referee in the world for many years. He was amazing, like incredible. Not good, the best. He retired because, you know, decided to have a family, stuff like this. But we had in Canada the best referee in the world for many years. On my side, they sent me to Berlin, to the course in Berlin in Germany. So I was like 30 some years old when I got the nomination. I was like, oh my God, like crazy. So very happy to go there. But then you need to remember that we honestly, we have to be honest, we had very little experience as a referee to go to this level, right? Oh. So, you know, when I went to my course, my city, I went into the papers, made the interview and this and that, okay? But then you take the plane and you go there and then you say, mm, what if? What if I fail? What if I'm not good enough? Because we don't know what are the expectations. So it's very stressy. And failure is not an option, right? Because, you know, if you fail this level and you come back to your country, say, I failed. So for sure it's the end. I mean, you never go back to a gym. So getting there, I'm a little guy from Trois-Rivières, small town in Quebec. I learn English, you know, watching TV. So I get there, this big room, you know, when you, you have your first class and you see your name and Andre Trotsky, Canada. So it's very nice, but stressful. So you get to the course and then, you know, and our, our instructor was a woman from USA, Patty Salvatore. Nice person, but kind of the strict side, like, you know, little military style, which is totally not my style. So I had to adapt, da, 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 okay. And um, so we start and get the rules and regulations and <laughs> I'll show you a good slide about that later, but the guy next to me is a Russian. Now it's the exam. Okay, and first part of the exam is true or false. So, and he next to me, he says, Andre, true, good, false, no good. And I'm saying, uh, yes, like, okay, good luck. And then she's, Andre, stop talking, because I'm going to fail you. Okay. So anyway, so we do the exam, da -da -da. half an hour after I'm gone, the Russian guy took like two and a half hours, uh, did not pass the exam. But anyway, so then we go ref, and this is an international competition, and I'm, you know, I'm working a match, and then Max next to me is Canada. And I'll talk about this later, but in the old days, the players were not very nice with the referees. And most of the time, they were also right, because honestly, we were not professional-like yet, because we didn't know really the rules, so we're doing our best. And the team from Canada was killing the referees, like very, very bad. And, and I was not, uh, not happy with them. Like, we're Canadian. You know, the Canadian way, normally we're like cool people and some sort of nice people. These guys were not nice. But that's okay, because I riffed them a little bit after in Canada, and I made them understand that their behavior was not so correct. So, I passed my course, but please remember that for later. Um, so one time, uh, you know, we have to score also when you're a candidate. To be honest, when uh, and I'm, I improve a little bit on that, but as a volleyball referee, I was not very good with scoring. Probably I never score. Mr. Boris, please put your ears like this. So um, when I went to the beach, the score sheet is different. I've never seen it before. It was not so good. So you know, in the morning they, they come and we did debrief from the day the day before, and the supervisor, I mean, Miss Salvatore, has a score sheet in her hand and. I have a score sheet here, so bad, so bad, terrible, horrible. Blah, blah, blah. So, <laughs> so she says, who is Andre Trottier? It's me. So all my friends, English speaking people were like crying and everything. So, so basically I failed the score sheet test badly, right? And so I was the example, which is not very good in a course, international referee course. And I told her, I said, Patty, I've never scored before. <laughs> she said, I, I know. So, and the funny part now is I'm teaching people how to score. So it's a, it's a scary thing. Uh, ah. So I passed my course. My first event was in South Africa. So I say, hey, this beach thing is not so bad, you know? So I went there, it was an amazing place. And I have to tell you that in my career, I was so lucky. Like, you know, you know when we say you have to, have a, to be at the right place at the right moment with the right people? You can check all those boxes for me because 
96, it was after the Olympics. The other referees who were there were Olympic referees. Uh, my roommate was the guy who made the final in uh, Atlanta. So, you know, make friends and relations and blah, blah, blah. And since they were coming from the Olympics, they said, you know, we're going to give all the big matches to the rookie, to the young one, so, which was me. So all the shit match I did and blah, blah, blah. And lucky for me, I did the final was USA Brazil. And in those days, like USA was always winning. USA, USA, USA. That tournament was the first time that a non-American team won the final, which was Brazil. Okay. And if you know, uh, is it me? Could be. Brazil is a very important country for the International Federation. So um, they won the match. So I was happy with that. My next nomination was the World Championship in Los Angeles. Not so bad. And there we had to build the courts. Because when the USA, you know the Americans, right? Any Americans here? No? Okay. We go to uh, UCLA, to the beach court, we, which I think I'm going to the USA. It's like, you know, if you're coming to a uh, high hockey match and you come to Canada, that should be perfect, right? I was wrong. We get to the court, and you know when you see the court, it's like this? Not good. So the two days training, what we did, we'd bring trucks with sand and we'd put some sand and we, you know, make it even and those things. So that was the preparation. So that was my second event and it went okay. Then after that, for many years, we had an event in Toronto and in Montreal. And I'm talking about early uh, 2000. And this is where we developed our referees and we were quite good then and very happy. And last year we had a tournament, oh, this year, is it this year? This, sorry. Uh, so we had this amazing event in Edmonton where I met Sean and Jim and people from Volleyball Alberta. And again, you guys should be so proud because for a first time event, it was awesome to see. Nothing to complain. The players were happy. The, the court, the, the staff, the line judges, the scores, well prepared by uh, Jim and his team and Sean. So, and hopefully, uh, I think we're going to have a tour again back in Canada in 2021. Because next year we were supposed to have one, but the, the time of your event was it's at the same time as the Olympic Games, which is not a good time to, to have an event. So this is the last course. We just gave a course uh, two weeks ago in, uh, in Santo Domingo in Republic in Dominican Republic, where again, we had two Canadian candidates and they were among the best of the group. The week before, they had a course also for volleyball, and again, our candidates were among the top of the of the referees in the uh, of the candidates. So good job. Mm -hmm. Okay, so far, not too boring. Okay, what is what is the life of a beach referee or supervisor on the world tour? Glamour, like you know, when I go back, you know. From my work, uh, you know, every time I go somewhere, the people, ah, Landry, you're so lucky, you're going to Australia, it's beautiful, glamour, blah, 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 all those things. Yes, we go to amazing location. I'm going to show you a few pictures, not so bad. Uh, traveling the world, that's true, all true, but there's a but, okay? We have long days. Long traveling, long schedule. Um, the referee in beach volleyball is very different than the one in volleyball. I'm going to talk about relationship with coaches and players later on on different slides. But uh, it's like that. When I was a referee, because I'm still talking about referee, we didn't have much coaches. It was like more older players and uh, few coaches. Because one of the big things also on the beach is why are there only two players? Why not four or three? Like for me, I always thought that three would be the best number. Okay. Until one player come to me, who I said, and remember those guys are making money, right? So if you win a tournament, you make like $60,000. It's not so bad for six matches, right? But they told me, you know, Andre, it's easier to divide 60 in two than it is in three or four. Okay. Not bad. And then when I was proposing to have three players instead of, uh, of two, well, there's a problem with the room, right? Because if there's two players, they can share the same room. 
uh, saving money. But now if we have three, we have to have one more room. Who's going to pay for it, right? Because remember, the top players make a lot of money, right? Five, six, eight teams. Let's go to 10 teams who make a lot of money. The other teams are not making money. So in a tournament of 32 teams, a lot of teams are losing money. And even worse, if you just go to the qualification tournament and you don't get to the main row, you make zero money. So you travel all the way to Australia, you lose in the qualification, and you have to go home. And by the way, the qualification players must pay their own hotel. Yeah, only if you're on the main road that you're okay. Yeah, in the old days, I can say in the old days because I'm old, um, it was like we were calling a sports players driven. So the players had all the power. We were all told back then, you know, the players make the show. So in the old days, they didn't like so much the referees to give cards to the players. Even though many players deserve like red cards and stuff like this. But it was the philosophy, the mentality. And at the top level, when you receive guidelines, it's easy. Either you respect the guidelines or you go home. As simple as that. So in the old days, you know, we were getting, I would say, a little bit verbally abused by the players. And I will say most likely same countries. I will not name the countries, but you know, almost the same countries were bad. And that was giving a bad image to beach volleyball. Because on TV, when you see a player kicking the ball in the referee stand and nothing happens, people say, what is that sport, right? Or getting uh, bad language to the line judges and scorers or the volunteers, not good. And then in 2012, we had a new president. You know, the men were saying uh, um, on the video, a guy from Brazil, okay? And he didn't like that because he's a former referee. So he came and he says, his name is Dr. Gracia. He said, referees, you need to change changes. So we are the referee commission meeting in Lausanne a few years ago. And he made his long speech about referees are not good. They accept to be abused by the players. We need to stop that, blah, 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 blah. And remember, we're in 2012 and we were starting back in 96 at this level. So, okay, so we said, uh, I am one of the person, you know, in, in Lausanne, when there's a meeting, you have a microphone. When you want to speak, you have to press it and the red light opens and then the focus is on you. So I like to press my button because I'm the black sheep in the guy. And I says, Mr. President, thank you very much. I appreciate your comment. But we need support from FIVB. Because if we start giving red card, because a red card on the Senate court is $1,000 fine that the players receive. Because we find out the best way to stop it is to give fine. So uh, I said, we need your support. Because, you know, if we apply fine, we don't want to lose your job and get critiqued by, by you and by, uh, by the FIVB and that the players pay the fines. No problem. Okay. So I go to the first event. It was in, Bra in Brazil. So this is where we talked to the referees and I, we spoke to the players. I said, guys, I need to tell you here, everybody now, now we have to respect you have to respect the referees and this is not allowed anymore and all the bullshit we used to have is finished. Do you agree? Any questions? It's time to, you know, I'm going to answer all your questions. Yeah, but this, yeah, but that. Yeah, I understand that. You have a big problem with the referee because he's bad. It's possible. Play the game. At the end of the game, come to me. We'll discuss and maybe you're right and we, we'll see what we can do. Okay. How much time you think it took us, referees and referee commission, to totally change the philosophy and the mentality of the sport. How many months, how many years, how many events? You think it took us to change the sport mentality? Come on, give me numbers. One what? One red card? One event or a year, a month? It took us half of a tournament. I w honestly, I was personally in shock. Like, what? That's not possible. And, and many players, because, okay, many players were upset of his behavior. Come on, because I, we told the players, when, when he looks like an idiot, I'm sorry. Um, well, everybody looks bad because this is your sport. Players, this is your sport. If you kill your sport, it's too bad. So they came in, uh, you know, we still had a few issues with some players, like the older, older generation, it took us more time. 
I can tell you now on the world tour, we have this uh, new generation of players. They are amazing. First of all, they are incredibly good, well-trained, well-coached, and uh, they just play the game, right? If they're, and when the referees are wrong, they tell the referees, no, I don't agree with you. This is not correct for whatever reason, which we find out that most of the time the players are right. Like we also find out in volleyball that sometimes when the coaches are upset, they're right. You know, we screwed up, we made a mistake, right? Of course, if we, we do 10 mistakes in one match, maybe we're in the wrong sport, so we have to, to do something else, right? Okay? So we did. We changed it, so now we have a better sport. Now we also use technology like you start using now in volleyball, like we have the microphone, we, have, we saw some challenge now. And I know for us in beach volleyball many years ago was a disaster when we're missing little touch and this and that. Now they just challenge. Challenge, and we show the video. Ah, there's a touch. Thank you very much. And we still have some issues in volleyball. It's not perfect yet, but you know, they're working on it. But it's new technology, and it's one more thing that the referees have to get used to, right? I know when we started the challenge, the referees were not happy with it, because getting overruled by a machine. I said, guys, we need to have the right call, right? So, so now it's good. I think it's good. We do have amazing location. Uh, in the old days, we were refereeing, having events only on the beach, right? In Rio, in Australia, in the USA, California, blah, blah, blah. And then we had meetings with promoters and we decided to, and that was a big decision, to take the, the match, not on the beach, but where the people are, in the city. And I remember the discussion we had with the players. Ah, we will never play in the city. Like, what the, no, we want to play on the beach. We want to play during the day, not at the night. And we're telling them, guys, if we have more people in the stadium, we're going to have more sponsors. We're going to have more TV exposure, meaning more money for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now we play in, we played in Paris. We played in London at the Olympics. This is in Switzerland. This is, for me, probably one of the most beautiful places on earth to be a referee at. Because you have, you have the mountain, you have this view, and it's a fantastic place. This is my, one of my last events. And in this match, you know, things look cool, we have no problem. You know, when I was talking to referee this morning and we're talking about body language, which I'm sure you coaches can really well analyze on the referee, you know, are they choking, are they, you know, so. In this moment, the nice lady here, she's a scorer. We're in Switzerland, it's the final, and she just choked, okay? She says, Andre, I had to stop the match, go to see her, and the score sheet is a disaster. We're, we're gone, we're live on TV, we have to fix it, okay? We have to find a way, and we're lucky because in beach, all the people in the scores, they are referees, okay? So the assistant scorer is also a scorer. So we don't sit there, but what I just did, I just took the score sheet and I just pushed it to the other guy, look him in the face, I said, you're in charge. And he said, okay. And we turned back and we continued the match. Very stressy moment. Nobody noticed. We're good. And this man here is the best man on earth. Because if you look at me in the eye, he says, I can't do it, we're in big trouble. Big trouble. We just, <laughs> thank you very much. Don't give me any shit about the rotation, okay? Don't worry. The next server, the there's two server in beach, right? So for sure, the guy know whoever goes to serve, fuck it's him, okay? He said, yes, yeah, yeah, don't worry about it. You know, you have to take chances, right? 50-50. That time I won. I was very happy. You know, I'm talking about emotion. Well, our sport is spectacular. We are entertaining. We know that. Okay, beach volleyball is fun. We have to have the, the music, the, the beautiful people in the crowd. We're spreading water on the, the, on the fans, stuff like this. So we have to be part of the show, right? So here we have this final in Russia, Brazil against Brazil, long match. They hate each other, right? So it's a war, okay? And we know it's gonna be a long match. So in this match, many things happen. 
And here, you know, we have a player who's at my stand, and he is also almost as tall as I am when I'm refereeing. And he's, he's, he's tired. It was a long, long rally, and he's tired. So he comes to me, and he says, Andre, I'm so tired, and blah, blah, blah. And you have to play with him, right? So I know he's tired. So I cannot say, go back, go back to the court, delay again. No, play the game. Talk to him. So I talked to him about beautiful people we had in the crowd. So it took him like, normally it should be like 15 seconds. It went like 30 some seconds. So he goes back. And the other team I know very well, they look at me like, what's going on? I say, hey, you know, I'll do the same for you if you come here. So just play the game. So he played. We went through a third set. It was a fantastic game. So you have to have the feel of the game. And also, we're lucky as a referee in beach because we have sunglasses and hat. So even though inside I'm totally destroyed and very nervous, you can see it. Thank God. Okay. So I like to be a referee, but now if I be asked me in 2005 to become a referee supervisor. We call it referee delegate on the world tour. FIVB, when they ask you something, they cannot really take no for an answer. So I, I was a referee. I'm a referee in my heart, you know, with friends and referee. When you finish the big day, you can go outside and, you know, visit the country or, you know, have a life. But they say, we would like for you to become a delegate. So I had to say yes. So I say yes. Making the transition from referee to referee supervisor was for me very difficult. In a sense that now you have to be in charge of the referees, you know, your friends most likely. Tell them what they do good, what they do bad. Organize events and all those things. And nobody told me about the reporting thing I had to do during and after the event. It was a surprise for me. Not necessarily a pleasant one because we have so many reports. But it's part of my job. One example I give you, like, you know, when I was telling you, okay, uh, Andre, uh, I'm, I work for a, I'm a computer guy, so I'm going to Thailand. Uh, well, I'm, yeah, Thailand is a good example. So for a tournament, oh, you're so lucky, Thailand is beautiful, blah, blah, yeah, okay. Okay, but what is my day? So I leave from Trois-Rivières, take the bus, go to Montreal, two hours, take the plane, go to Toronto, Toronto, Hong Kong, Hong Kong, uh, uh, Bangkok. Then Bangkok, Phuket, which is now three hours, I believe. Then a three-hour ride from the airport to the venue. Okay, that, that's okay. Then you get there and you, 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 know, you think you're going to go to your room and get a shower. And no, no, no. <laughs> They're waiting for you. Andre, we're waiting for you. There's a meeting. Okay. Like uh, I had like 30 hours, you know, lost in my life and I'm 20 hours behind, but no, it's okay. So you go to the meeting, da, 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 then you just want to go to bed, right? No. There is a VIP dinner tonight. Ah, okay. So wear no suit and tie because we don't do that in beach, but you know, and I have to go there, then I meet my people, and then the next day we start. So then this is my life. And on a beach side, we get to the venue around 8 o'clock in the morning because we start at 9. Sometimes you have to drive one hour to get to the venue. Then you do the thing, right, the whole day. And I was talking to the other referees now. We have this new thing now on the world tour. It's called light. So when we have lights, we have people at night. So, you know, the organizer wants to have more people in the stadium. So we play from night matches from 6 p.m. until the last match is scheduled at 10, which means we finish at 11.30. We go back to the hotel, report, make nomination for the next day. And by the way, we have between four and six courts, about 10 or 12 rounds per court. So you have to assign that every day. So glamour, yes. Amazing location, yes. A little of work though, but it's okay. One of the things that I have to learn, uh, you know, working with the organizer and stuff, is diplomacy. Because you're traveling the world. You have different people, different, um, uh, culture, like when you go to Asia, they have a way, like I find out that in Asia, if you want to have something to be done, you have to talk to the bus. If you talk to an arm, a worker, you won't do it because you need his bus to do it. 
Yeah, but I'm used to like, you know, I need something to be done by you, I'm going to ask you, right? No? Uh, okay. So that's a way to do. Um, Africa is also an interesting place to work, so. Relation with players and coaches. Um, as a referee, you're used to have a relation with the, 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 the players, it's okay. But now we have more and more coaches in beach volleyball because, you know, more money. So now the teams, the good teams, they have a coach. They have a psychologist, they have a physiotherapist, and they have also, most likely in their own country, a nutritionist. So this is how the level we have now. So now I have to interact a lot with coaches, which I like, with most of them who are very nice. Uh, and I need to say one thing, in beach volleyball, the relation, relationship is direct. If a player is upset, he will tell you. Sometimes in the match or sometime after. And we talk about it, and then we solve the issue, right? So it's one of the things that I like, and I think we need to improve this in, uh, in volleyball. And I'm not here to make any lesson or lecture, but it, it's okay for referees to have a relation with a coach. What's wrong? Ah, oh, come on, what's wrong? And sometimes I have eye contact with the coach, what's wrong? Ah, okay, so if I need to explain something long, I'll call the captain over and say, hey, Right? This is my ball handling judgment. Okay? And I'll be fair with both teams. I will not change it. So tell your coach this is what it is. Okay? And if I'm not fair with both teams, you can complain. And I will accept that. But the, my level of ball handling is that. Okay? So, and I think it's a thing that we can improve a little bit in, in volleyball. Okay, almost done with that. She's, this is Patty Salvatore, my instructor in Berlin. You know what, ha this is the, debrief, uh, the debriefing after one match. And um, in my hands, I have a score sheet that she made a mistake with. <laughs> you know where I'm going, right? God, when I saw that, like I had like, you know, a mental orgasm, like, oh my God. So I made a big speech in front of everybody like with the score sheet in the morning, says, guys, referees, this is the world championship. I have a score sheet here. It's terrible. One of the worst score sheet I've ever seen. I told the referees before what I was doing. This is, this world championship, there is a mistake. The referee did not sign the score sheet. Come on, international referee. So I said, okay, who's Patty Salvatore? Like, it was laughing. And then she says, geez, I said that to you, right? Said, yes, ma'am. <laughs> See behind us, this big pile of sand, right? We have a tractor because there's a hurricane coming, okay? So the guy has been working for two days making this big pile of sand, right? And our hotel was next to the beach. When the hurricane hits, one waves, poof, gone. And we lost all the cord and everything. It was fantastic. So sometimes being a referee delegate has some good advantages. Ah, this is a protest, very, very complicated protest. Uh, and even though those kids were 19 years old, eh, she didn't let go so easy, okay? I had to convince her and, you know, it was not easy. But she resumed again, that's what we want. Okay, the last part, I'll try to be quick. Um, I'm also an instructor, and this is what I like best. So I give courses to national federation to organize beach volleyball, give courses to the referees and blah, blah, blah. So, and when I do this, I am one, about 10 days with, with, I would say normal people, people from the country. Because when you go to a world tour, it's, we're like in a bubble, okay? We have the same players, the same coaches, same referees, and we just work with the local people. But when I give those courses, I really work with normal people. And this is, I really like. Okay, and I got the chance to, to go to all those places. Um, I went to IET, which is probably one of the most poorest countries in the world. Very difficult. And I will never forget one time, I was in Niger, which is also really, really, really poor. And the next week, I traveled to Austria, uh, Austria where is the um, biggest and richest world tour event in the world. Like a world tour event is from $300,000 to organize to $5 million. But in Austria, it's $10 million, the event. 
It's incredible. Okay. The VIP, they have two VIP rooms, okay, section for the normal VIPs, okay, and they have the super VIPs. The one who fly, they have their Rolls Royce. I'm not allowed to go inside the super VIP, even though I'm the bus there. There's no, you cannot enter. Sorry. So going from Niger to this place where people were more rude and, you know, I love the people from Niger better, but then you can really see the world, right? So, interesting. Uh, no, okay, continue this. I'm almost done, don't worry. Ah, this is a course I gave in Vanuatu. Vanuatu is a very small, uh, there's small islands in the uh, South Pacific. Uh, beautiful place. This is uh, the course. This is their playing ground. They don't have, in this area, there's no flat area. So they play in the grass like this. They, 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 they never dive, right? They, by the way, it was a volleyball course anyway, but uh, they play with their feet. You know, instead of diving, they just go like this and they're incredible. Amazing players. There's, this is a volcano and there is two uh, population. One down on the ocean and the other one at the top of the volcano. I got there from uh, the airport. Uh, the airport, there's no runway, it's in the grass. They took me in a pickup truck to go up in the jungle. Took an hour and a half in a pickup truck to get there. Every day I had candidates walking down from down there to up there in the jungle two hours a day to come follow the course. I was in such admiration with those people, like unbelievable. No lights, no electricity, no telephone. An incredible place. Vanuatu, if you have a chance, I strongly recommend. Just a bit far. So these are the major events I had a chance to attend to. Okay, um, quickly to just to finish. Uh, Olympic Games, I had a chance to do three. I am very very lucky. Um, Many people have asked me, how do you prepare to Olympics? Well, you can't. You cannot prepare to an Olympic Games. My job is to teach referees how to get there. I'm giving them matches, tough matches, everything. But when you get there to the first day, and the first time you ref, I still have chilly things, you know, because it's incredible, you know. Because when you get there, it's one court, major focus. Been to world championship, to those big events. Olympic is, is 10 times, 100 times bigger. Too big, to be honest. It's crazy. Politic behind and, and the money involved, but it, it's good. But what I want to bring to you, uh, so this is our two Canadians who are world champions, Sarah Pavin and Melissa Human Paradez. They won the world championship in Hamburg. This is this stadium. This is an amazing stadium in Germany. And they are, honestly, in Canada, we, be we strongly believe that we have not even one chance of a medal, but maybe two on the women's side. So we'll see what happens. Um, the work of the coaches uh, in Canada for beach, even for the men's and the women's, is incredible. The way they bring those players to this level. And the other very important aspect in beach volleyball is the psychological aspect. Because, you know, there's two players. And I played myself, and when you play bad, it's horrible, right? Because there's only two. If I play bad, he's going to serve me all the time, right? And my partner is upset. And even worse, at the end of the day or the tournament, I am in the same room as he is. We're roommates. We're flying together. So the psychological aspect is very, very important. And I think in Canada, we're doing a really good job on that. So hopefully we'll do the same in volleyball. I think we have uh, good chances also on the men's. So we'll see what happens. Thank you very much.